Okay, I think we should start. In time for Pronso. So, welcome to my session, IBM Lotus Traveler High Availability in a Nutshell. Um, my name is Renny Winkelmeyer. I'll be the host of your session for the next 50 minutes, 60 minutes. Depends how much question you want to ask afterwards. First of all, who is using Lotus Traveler? That's good. Oh, IBM too. That's fine, that's fine. Okay, before we start, a few words about my person. That's a business photograph of me. So and normally I'm not look, looking like, uh, like that. Um, I'm a senior consultant for a Germany-based company called Midpoints. I'm working in the Lotus area since 1999. So I'm not so old, but I'm working with this stuff nearly half of my life, nearly. Uh, the, my main responsibility in this company is uh, to develop applications like uh, mobile device management, like a domino-based Dropbox for iOS and for Nodes, like building plugins and some consultancy. So mainly I'm a developer, but I'm doing a, a session about administration. Anybody knows OpenNTF? Anybody knows File Navigator? Okay, that's from me. Who doesn't know, just download it, it's really cool. If you want to get in touch with me after the session, I'm very social. I don't sell social, but I am social. If you've got questions afterwards, just drop me a mail, get in touch on Skype, on LinkedIn, Facebook, however. Yeah, just the questions, I'm open. I will respond within 24 hours normally, even on holidays. My wife complains about that. <laughs> it is. Okay. Anything you will see in this session is subject to change. It's non-official code. It will be published next week, hopefully GA. But currently I have to put this slide in because it's not official. What I will talk about is Lotus, no Lotus Traveler 853 and prior, prior. Where are we coming from? Just a few slides so that you, that you can understand where Traveler is going to. I will talk about Traveler up 853 Upgrade Pack 1. Not about 854, Upgrade Pack 1. You will see what that means. And then we are going into the new features, the new functionality you will be able to get next week. We will talk about high availability, about load balancing, about a new administration interface, and about a few considerations about if and how to use high availability. And if I speak too fast, I'm not a native English speaker, just raise your hand, please, because I tend to speak faster when I speak English. Not so fast as when I speak German, but I tend to. <laughs> okay, where do we come from? Domino, Rego product, everybody's using it. I love it, it never breaks. Maybe that's a problem of Domino, but it, it's really cool. And IBM has added Traveler along, uh, for around four and a half years ago. A long time for this product. It's free, it's just working. Some people are telling me it's just the best product IBM ever built because it just works. Installing within, installation within five minutes, up and running. They started with Windows Mobile, went to Nokia, added iOS support, added Android support, uh, added companion, and now, next week, high availability. A very feature-rich set of um, functionality you will get here. First of all, we should look about a normal server topology, as you can see it at a lot, lot of customer sites. Anybody running it that way? Just Traveler directly in the DMZ? Uh, okay. That's one way you can do it today. We've got some customers who do that because they don't want to have additional reverse proxies in front of it. Another way could be to add a secure reverse proxy like Lotus Mobile Connect. That should be hopefully more to secure your environment. So really simple, you've got your mobile devices, they are connecting to, to the reverse proxy, they are connect, connecting to the Traveler server and back on, on the node side to the Domino Mail servers. That's a th simple thing today. Just a small chart about how Traveler works today. The biggest point is 
you've got a local SQL, SQL storage, sorry, SQL storage, English word, for data. That means all traveler data, all users, all devices, connection data, synced folders, all that stuff is located on a local, not network SQL database. Anybody knows why it is a SQL database? Okay, in the long history, Traveler was a part of IBM WebSphere family. And you know, WebSphere does some SQL stuff. They don't like NSF, so they use SQL. And to move this product to Domino just was maybe a cost thing, so they just added a Derby database. That's made, that, made, that will make it easy for going to the new high availability but it's a local uh, database. When your hard disk crashes, you can't replicate the database. Everything is gone. If you have denied a device because, because it has been stolen last year and the Derby database crashes, you will lose this information. So Traveler by itself doesn't support clustering as per today. It supports mail clusters, for sure. So if your mail server goes down, mail cluster A, you can, it will use mail cluster B. The data is stored in a dedicated NSF on each Trevor server. Maybe you've looked into that database before. But you don't have a real HA, high availability to today. You can say, hey, I'm just cloning a system, and if, it, if the system goes down, I'm replacing the VM. You can maybe run a hot standby system, or what I prefer, just install it from scratch. It's just 15 minutes take a fresh Windows, a fresh Linux, put Domino and Traveler on it, and it works. So, cheap, high availability. And now, IBM will introduce the new features, the long-requested feature HA with the so-called Upgrade Pack 1. Does anybody use the Domino Upgrade Pack 1 in this company? Okay, for those who don't know that, it's the XPages extension library. This has been added nearly half a year ago to Domino in the naming of Domino 853 Upgrade Pack 1. So the question is, what is an upgrade pack? What the hell is that? Well, an upgrade pack is a new way to, de to deliver new functionality to the product without touching the core system. So you can go to your administrator, you all, you are all administrators, I want to update to upgrade pack one, two, three, however. And you don't need to go th uh, through all the testing because you're not touching the core. You can deliver functionality faster to your environment. And what I really like, upgrade pack one for Traveler doesn't only contain HA. It contains a lot more. Um, like a new client version management, we will dig into that, about a new web-based administration interface, if you like that, I don't know, additional settings for Android, additional settings for filtering, uh, removing the need of XML configuration for Traveler, moving to the notes any, I really love that, and a lot of other things. So let's start. You will need Domino 853 to run Upgrade Pack 1. And if you want to use high availability, you need a 64-bit operating system. Not a 64-bit Domino, you know, on Linux, we don't have 64-bit Domino, but a 64-bit operating system. Without that, you won't be able to run HA. You can get the rest, but no HA. You will need Upgrade Pack 1 on the server for Domino. It, will, it is contained within the installation image, so the installation image for Traveler just grows a little bit, or some more, so everything will be installed automatically. And if you want to run HA, you currently have two SQL database types. Windows SQL 2008, regular or R2, and IBM DB2 version 9705. Minimum. I'm running it on 1703. It complains a little bit, it works, but that's a recommendation of IBM. If you want to get support, you will need that. We're going into that uh, somewhat later. The best thing is DB2 is included in Traveler for free. So if you don't have DB2, well, it's free, you can get it with Traveler. 
like when you get connections and profiles and that stuff in, in Nodes Domino, it's free too, so very cool if you don't have any of those database systems in your company. Real cool thing, they change the configuration. I really hate it, I really hate it to use this XML file to set them sp specific settings like uh, how long is the length for a name lookup, what fields should be returned when somebody researches for contacts and all that stuff. Antias config XML, somebody use that to refine his environment? Okay, nobody, that's strange. Okay, that, that means you don't know that. Now, with 853 UP1, everything can be conf configured via the nodes ini. And that's what nodes dominant administrators like. I can put settings in a server configuration document, I can change everything there and don't need to go to the file system and change it over there. So very good, you will get that with UP1, if you use HA or not, it doesn't matter, you will get it. Next cool thing is they change the traveler URI. That means calling your server slash servlet slash traveler will be shortened to your server slash tra traveler. A little bit more ease for the users to enter the URL in the mobile browser. But old installations will remain. They are just adding automatic, automatically uh, server redirect URL. So very nice, very cool for the users. An additional setting with UP1, also available for HA and non-HA, is that you can define what's going on with attachments and what's going on with send mail. So you can define from the server side if somebody sends a mail with his mobile device, should that be stored in his mail file, yes or no. And you can also define, do I want to save attachments which have been sent with a mobile device? I'm just thinking about virus scanning, an example. You don't have a control what's on the mobile device. So very cool setting. Um, maybe you will need it or not. Question? Okay. Another thing, and that's a security thing I really like, is as per today, each mail a user sends from his mobile device is sent by his home mail server. Does anybody run antivirus on their home mail servers? Okay, less people. Okay, the rest, are you running antivirus on your mail servers? Yes, that's good. Mainly what we are seeing in, in larger environments is that dedicated servers are only doing antivirus. And with this setting, you're able to say, hey, Rene sends a mail, please use my gateway server to send that. So you have a central, way, a central place for antivirus, for putting disclaimers and all that stuff away from the regular user's mail server. Very cool. I'm sorry. If you've got exposed your servers to the internet, or they are reachable via VPN, nodes docklinks are now converted to working web links. So if I get a mail from, a, from an application, Traveler automatically moves that link to a working HTTP link. That's cool. The bad thing is that application needs to be reachable via HTTP. I know a lot of companies who don't expose their applications to the web, so something you have to consider about. But real cool, and you get it with UP1, despite if you're using HA or not. It's, it's just there. And what you will also get is a new administration interface. Anybody likes XPages? Okay, you administrators, you don't, you don't, don't like them. I see, I see, okay. You will get the new administration interface for classic non-HA traveler and for high availability. If you're running traveler standalone without HA, you will still be able to use the standard nodes database. But please consider it as deprecated. That's my fair opinion. You will see um, everything moves to the web. 
and as administrators now can manage their travel environment from everywhere, because it's web-based, please consider if your colleagues and you are using weak HTTP passwords, please change them. Because if somebody breaks in, he can manage your whole travel environment now, and maybe you don't want that. Okay, I put some screenshots. I will show it live after the screenshots. Here are a few things to see. You're seeing a regular one UI theme. You're seeing the security settings as you know them from the standard database. Nothing really improved, just that from the classic NOS database. Your device security, uh, you will have additional default device settings. We're digging into that somewhat later. No photographs, Sandra? Um, you, uh, you get um, device information, an example. User information, not, nothing more like you have today, just a few fields. And you're getting, and that's new for HA, an overview of all HA servers you are running in one view. And additional, the new client download manager. Anybody not using iOS in the company? Italy is really Android, a thing, I think, a lot of Androids I've seen around here, yes. So you will get a new client download manager. That means you, will, you are able to manage which clients can be downloaded by the users. And you don't need to go to the file system to manage that. All installation files are now stored mainly in the SQL file. It doesn't matter if it's Derby or if, it, or if it's DB2, however. And this really helps if, you're, if you've got in the future maybe three Trevor servers. You can define, uh, it, will be, it will help that all clients are up to date on all servers. And the real cool thing is you can assign different Traveler clients to different users or groups. So if you want to test that your administrator group may test a new traveler client, assign it to them, and the rest get, gets the old one. Really cool stuff. And it works on all, even HA or non-HA. Yes, as I already said. And traveler autom automatically ca takes care that all traveler servers are updated accordingly. Another new feature, default device settings. Anybody using that or policies? Policies? Okay, default device settings? Okay, less. There are new, some, some new features, like adding additional filter settings around here for mobile devices, like adding new synchronization options, peak time sync. So between the working hours, I want to have push, and after that, mainly every second hour are manual very a hot topic currently in Germany to say that companies aren't allowed to send users push mail um, after work. Very, very hot topic currently, so we'll see. And if you're running default settings, you can lock that now on the device. Something you need to, you uh, have to use policies today, now you're able to use the default settings too. And that's really cool. Extended settings for Android 4. That's a minor, minority of systems. I don't see, see a lot of Android 4 systems only at administrators and other IT geeks. The others are running two, three, however. And now you can prohibit the copy to the clipboard. You can uh, prohibit the export of attachments and that stuff. Really cool for the whole HA and non-HA environments. So before I start here, just want to show you because you should see that it really works. <laughs> okay. I learned a lot here in Italy, you know. My first time I learned, I learned a lot. Okay, what you're seeing here now is the device security settings. It depends if my server is fast enough. Loading. Here we go. Okay. That data is gathered from the web application 
and from DB2. For that, the user does not need to reach the DB2 server because all connection between the web interface and the SQL data system is done in the back end. So it's really cool from a security perspective. You click that link, you get a really nice dialog box, <coughs> Dojo-like, where you have all the options as you have them today. Not less and not more. That's the same for device settings or for devices. See, the most travel server goes on, okay. The most cool thing is the client software. Here are the different clients that are available. And if they are not assigned, nobody will get them. And I really love that. Just, I just can make an assignment, search in my local domain directory, uh, and add them. There are some tweaks, because if you want it to add it to an, an organizational unit, you have to make a group for that. So you can't choose that, but it's okay. Very quite easy, different sort options. Um, the traveler overview is really cool, because here's my traveler server, and if I'm an administrator, I can log in and say, hey, please update it every two minutes, so that I can see what's the heartbeat. It's really nice. Okay, going back how high availability works and what the load balancing means, means in that context. If I will get my remote back over here. Here we go, okay. You can run your travel environment in two modes. Standalone, as you know it today, local Derby database, regular Lotus Traveler and its app if you want, or you can run HA, high availability. If you run that, you won't be able to use the classic Lotus Traveler NSF anymore. You have to use the web interface, point. And you need a re remote SQL database, for sure. The currently supported systems, IBM DB2 and SQL 2008, should run in HA mode. They need to be clustered too. I mean, you can take just a single instance server and say, hey, what the hell, but you won't need multiple travel servers if you don't run a SQL system in HA mode too. So anybody got DB2 or SQL 2008 know-how in the company currently? Okay, a third around the people. Okay, you can install it and don't, don't think further about it, but think about you need maybe some know-how about these topics. And that's how the new infrastructure, if you want to run HA, will look like. You've got your mobile devices, they are connecting to an IP sprayer, to a reverse proxy, in example, Lotus Mobile Connect. This one spreads the traffic through the ser traveler service pool, one up to however many servers you want, and they're connecting back to the domino mail servers. Could, things can get a little bit more complicated. So you can put in front a load balancer or a re 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 reverse proxy, I hate that word. So a uh, load balancer is not really recommended in my opinion. I personally prefer to use uh, something like Lotus Mobile Connect, real high scalable, not so expensive, and uh, that's really good. And it serves also that when I connect to the proxy, it directs the user to the same backend system. That's somewhat better. Additionally, all traveler servers are getting pooled in HA. That means you're adding one to n traveler servers to a pool. Each server in the pool can manage each user. So it doesn't matter if I've, I've been connected to traveler A and then to traveler C. No, it doesn't matter, no more prime zones, just each server, each user. And each server serves each HTTP request. The good thing is that Traveler in HA also has a built-in load balancing. If I connect to Traveler server A as a user and the Traveler, ser Traveler server says, hey, I have too much to do, it redirects the connection to Traveler server B without anything. Built-in load balancing. That's good. 
but not if you want to run that setup across data centers in different countries. We'll come to that later. Okay, the communication could be encrypted. There are some additional SSL settings available. Um, you should go to the documentation then because it's, it's too much stuff for, for the justice hour. So anybody runs Traveler and its installation isn't so hard today, isn't it? Just say setup or next, 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 next ready. Yes, 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 it is. And Yes. So, uh, is it possible to simply use an existing, uh, uh, let's say, S Microsoft X uh, SQL Express 2008 and simply create a, a new instance of it? For sure. Technically, it's not pro it's no problem. You can also run DB2 Express, but the problem is you ha don't have high availability built in in DB2 Express. You're not entitled. An example. And even SQL 2008 doesn't entitle clustering the SQL database. So the question is, if, you, if I want to cluster my traveler servers, I should also cluster the backend system where the data is stored. That's like currently. Question answered? OK. But you can use any existing system. You don't need to set up a dedicated SQL server for that, any existing system. So it's so easy, it's just traveler. Installation of HA needs, if you exclude the installation of DB2, five minutes maximum. And you're running in HA mode. And that's Traveler, just easy. We're going to the different steps now. The first one is install, install, installate Traveler like you do today. Run setup, further, further finish. And you have to stand alone Traveler installation. You can see that. And the node any connection, uh, node any parameter NTS DB connection URL that points to the local Derby database. You can also check it using tell HTTP OSGI SS and the rest. Anybody knows that command? Tell HTTP OSGI SS? Okay. IBM has built in with 852, a long time ago, 852, a nearly full J2EE web server on top of Domino. And that's part of the OSGI console. So Google that. You will need that in the future. If your developers are coming with the extension library, you will need that. Trust me. OK, now you need to create the SQL database on the server. You can have it done automatically or manual. I prefer auto. I don't want to do anything manual. So I go, I'm go, but I'm going to, to both steps. Automatically, I'm just going to into the DB2 control center. I create a new database, call it Traveler in my example, and that's all. Point. If you want to do it, do it manual, here are the different steps. Go to the, to the Traveler data directory, enter some weird DB2 commands, and that will create a table but I prefer to click. Maybe you've got a DB administrator for that, but I prefer to click. And then it's really easy. Just copy a JAR file, which is responsible for doing the DB2 Java communication to the Traveler directory. Execute the new Traveler Util Excel. That's, they are both running on Windows and Linux, but please beware, Traveler Util has an uppercase U on Linux. Could be sometimes weird. And that will create a connection between Traveler and DB2. Done. Not really, not really bad, or? Not really bad. And please, don't forget, you do that once. That means for a regular Traveler installation, just install Traveler as per today run that Trevor util command and you are done. Point. Full HA. Travel as it is. Easy. Simple. No costs. Additional administration benefits. You can manage any Traveler server from any Traveler server. 
That means remote console, console commands on the Domino server are accessible across servers for Traveler. I really love that. So you will get some new options. Tell Traveler bind is one. To say Stefano should be on Traveler server A and Sandra on Traveler server B. And you can bind that. But beware, so when that server goes down, it won't fail, fail over for that user. So not really good. There are new HADR options. I hope my, my console will work. I will show you to them so that you can see how healthy is my server. It's really nice. Tell Traveler users, not user, singular, users for all, so that you can see all users of this specific server. And you can enable, disable a Traveler server from the membership. So that no new, user, no new users will be added. Very nice. Maybe something uh, you will be able to use. Real cool is that you can issue several commands across servers. You can say, hey, I just want to issue it to server A or to server B, or please disable all servers however you want. Really nice option. Really good. Let's see if I can show it on the console over here. We are seeing some error messages on the console, but it's still better code, so. Yeah, so. Okay, and what you're seeing now here, I love my Mac because, because I can do that. Tell HADR show, shows the same information, like this on my server, host name, IP port, reachable, and so on. But it's nearly the same as I can see here in the web interface. One bonus point, the administrators which are using the new web interface don't need remote console access to the server to issue commands. A new security addition. Okay, some considerations for and if using high availability. Who wants to use it after the session? Okay, that's fine. Let's see if I can just get my mouse back. Ah, here we go, okay. The good point is you, it's really easy to scale as you need. We've got customer environments from 10 mobile devices up to 4,000 mobile devices. So really high scaling with two machines, no problem. Gives them CPU, gives them RAM, everything works. So if you want to move to HA, it's good. You can scale it even more if you want. You won't have any downtime because you can upgrade your servers when you want. You have other servers who are responsible. So really easy if you want that. But you will need additional infrastructure. So if you don't have a reverse proxy, if you don't have a load balancer, you will need that point. If you don't have SQL in your house, well, you need that. I'm not afraid of that. I would just install DB2 and it runs and everything's okay if you run a single DB2 instance. But you sh maybe should somebody know who has some knowledge in HA for DB2 or a SQL to have a clustered environment. Think about that. And currently only DB2 and SQL 2008 are supported. Other systems are considered for a future release. The request for Oracle and so on. So currently not, but we hope that it will come soon. And running HA in different data centers, maybe co-located across cities, countries, is not a real good opinion. Because think about latency. You've got a DB2 cluster across two cities. They need to sync in real time. And you've got multiple traveler servers, maybe one in the US, one in, in China, big bad latencies to both countries from, from Europe. Uh, and all traveler servers have to communicate all time between them. So having data, a data center maybe here and the next one a kilometer far away is no problem, but across countries can become a problem. You should consider that. 
Okay, I'm finished. That's bad. Too early for Pronto, isn't it? <laughs> Half an hour for Pronto. Okay, and then they're not serving coffee anymore. That's bad. Okay, but uh, we've got t time for a lot of questions. I want to know if you uh, consider uh, as a good idea to use the fault tolerance uh, function uh, available on vSphere servers uh, to put on uh, to put some security on the SQL server instead of setting up a more a much more complex uh, to maintain a Microsoft cluster. I think you should, you should move from Microsoft to IBM DB2. <laughs> no, 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 okay. I don't. don't I don't. Really this is this is because um, basically we have we already have in all our installations uh, some SQL server that's there for other 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 things, other functions, and so on. So why not using them if they are already protected by VMware fault tolerance? I I would like very much to avoid to uh, set up a new specific Microsoft cluster just for that. Okay, I'm not into the VMware stuff, but um, a cluster for DB2 is just recommended because this SQL database stores all data. So if, if that breaks, you're in the same situation as when your Traveler server breaks today. And if you say you're running very well with the setup today and everything is okay, you can do it. You don't need to run the DB2 or SQL cluster, uh, database in a cluster mode. That's recommended if you don't have other ways for that. The good thing is DB2, an example, is free. And if you've got existing systems, it doesn't matter if it's SQL 2008 or DB2, you can put it on top, no problem. Okay, in, other wor in other words, uh, what's your, uh, in your opinion, uh, um, is it a good idea? To, uh, are you considering protected an SQL server uh, that uses the, the VMware for tolerance or not. I do, but I don't know if you do as well. And as, a, and as I don't have experience with the fault tolerance of VMware, I can give a recommendation to that. Okay. Yeah, you just have to consider that's the main storage for Traveler point. And if it breaks, or if it's inconsistent, that will lead to problems. Thank you very much. I've got a few small questions. I'm not sure I understood precisely if uh, we're running right now the standard traveler and we're considering to upgrade to this new version. It seems like there are a few nice features. I was wondering, right now, all our data are stored in a NSF file, is that correct? No, in a local Derby database, local SQL okay, file. Okay, sorry, uh, because I was wondering, uh, you said that the next step will be to use DB2 or, what did you say, uh, SQL Server and so on, and eventually in the future Oracle and so on, and there will be eventually nodes as a storage no. system? No, 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 no way. No, no, no. You have to look so we have to forget that. Yes, yes. Okay, it's I, a, a bit contradiction. I, I, I'm getting those questions. Why not NSF? Yeah. Uh, I'm not an IBM, so I can, okay, say it's anything, not I, yeah. I can say anything I want. So it's not NSF like BlackBerry does, but you have to look in, back into the history. It was a WebSeed product, and it has been designed for yeah. SQL, and that's why they're going to SQL. Sure. No, I understand that the main architecture was that, but yeah, okay. I would have preferred that, but... Yeah. Thank you. Um, 
uh, I want to know if it's possible to put in high availability also the Lotus Mobile Connect env environment in order to avoid a single point of failure, considering uh, the Lotus Mobile Connect as a primary VPN uh, connection to the traveler environment. Okay, you, you can use, uh, I'm not so part of a Lotus Mobile Connect expert, so you can use a SQL database too as a data storage for LMC. So if you put something like an um, IP sprayer in front of LMC to say which one of those is available, you can run two LMCs and point them back to the travel servers. With, with a big environment with around 5,000 users which are using such a setup, one IP sprayer, load balancer an example, two LMCs, and after that, four traveler servers currently. So there is no problem. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. The next one will be over there. Um, considering the um, a server in, some servers in the pool, okay, uh, how the load is uh, balanced over this pool? Uh, there is a way for, uh, that you may manage the load of each server of the pool or it's more or less automatically done by Traveler and you forget it? You forget it. It just, Traveler does it by itself. Currently, you don't have any point of influence on how and when is low balance and done between the servers. Uh, just asking something to help my friend to, to rest for a while. Uh, so, uh, probably I've missed something, but uh, it's not clear to me uh, how to act when it's time to install the second Traveler server. Okay. Uh, because you told, just install the first one as you did before, then change things in order to uh, set up the HA, but how I install the second? Uh, the second Traveler must be installed uh, after the first, of course. But at this time, <laughs> the first has been already modified in order to use a different database and uh, with uh, the HA function available at this time. So, um, being aware of this, shall I instruct in some way the second traveler uh, when I'm starting to install that I am going to join a pool in some way and how? Just with this slide. You're installing from scratch, installing a new standalone version, issuing this command to Traveler Util, and that will add the second, the third, however, server to the pool. It, it's just as simple as it, as it is. Okay. I clean up my slides and say first and additional servers for this one. Nothing more to run. <laughs> Just a second, a second. Uh, in uh, small infrastructure, I'm using uh, Apache to uh, publish uh, um, iNotes with uh, load balancing and failover. Do you think it's possible to use this reverse proxy uh, for travel too? For sure. In my slides are also Apache Pound mentioned, so you can use Apache if you want. Okay. I, like, I, I pr personally like LMC, Lotus Mobile Connect, because it has a really tight integration into all IBM products, iNodes, same time, Collections Mobile, same time Mobile, and that stuff. Okay, thank you. But Apache works, yes. I set it up on the Windows machine, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, just some information. Um, you, you say that uh, we need uh, a SQL cluster, uh, is correct. Do you know if, if uh, um, it supported also uh, the SQL mirroring of Microsoft? No. I, I don't know. Ah, you don't I, I don't know. know. It should be. Or is, is it the same? Um, no, it's not, uh, it's not the same. 
in the, in the SQL mirroring, we have uh, two, two servers that uh, exchange the information, like um, Lotus Replica. Okay. And um, when, uh, when one server um, is down, there is a, um, another server that uh, uh, moves the, the availability from one server to another. But uh, there is a, I, I don't know exactly uh, how it works, but there is a protocol of Microsoft that uh, uh, informed the, the server that the new SQL to, to refer is an order. And it's very useful for us be because we, uh, we can use the cluster on uh, um, two data center using uh, um, an Ethernet ca cable and not uh, fiber or uh, router uh, link. Okay, so no experience. Don't know. But, but, but that sh shows the complexity. <laughs> I'm doing Node Domino for 13 years, but I don't have anything to do with SQL. Okay. So, and a lot of you maybe too, or don't you? No, no, thanks. Qualcun altro? Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome.